Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I'm so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is all about how you think about the concept of guaranteed success. This idea of guaranteed success comes up when you're stuck, like it's the magical missing piece of desired decision making. This topic is also something we dove into at the 50 Unplugged Retreat last weekend, which was called Becoming Bold and Brave. So I'll share a little bit about that too. First, I'm not sure how much you know about one of the best ways to work together, which is in my one-year mastermind called 50 Unplugged. Have you heard me talk about this before? Actually, it's the best way to help you focus on what you can do with your next chapter instead of what you like to think about, which is what you can't do. (laughs) It's really all about becoming bold and brave in midlife. It's about up-leveling. It's about getting out of your own way so that you're more comfortable and intentional about allowing yourself to be happier. It's about learning how to think on purpose. It's about making sure that you don't have regrets and finally putting yourself first so that you know what you want and exactly how to make it happen. And one of the best parts is that you get to do this work with an amazing small group of women who are just as committed as you are to getting excited about their lives. So last weekend at the retreat, we all got to meet each other in person in Toronto for the first time. We've been working together for quite some time now. But even though it's classes on Zoom with a webcam, it's still a little different and even more awesome to really get to know each other like this, like personal. And, you know, you can give somebody a hug. It's uh, it was so, so good. And the retreat was intimate. And it's exactly what we were able to do. Now, I've been posting a lot of pictures in my free Facebook group, the Women in the Middle community. So if you're curious, make sure to join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. And you can check it all out. This first retreat was a combination of stretching your mind with happiness coaching, stretching your body with gentle yoga, and stretching your creativity with art journals and some cool work on picking your intentional word. I had specialists come in for the mixed media art and the yoga too, and I have to tell you, I totally got my professional entrepreneurial jollies because I happened to be close friends with these amazing women that I pulled together for my dream team. It was so much fun for everyone. The work we did helped shift everyone from where they are now to where they want to be at so many levels. The other thing that helped make this retreat remarkable was the view. We had a stunning view from the 41st floor overlooking Lake Ontario, which is one of the Great Lakes. The vastness of the lake with no end or land in sight. Well, of course, other than the Toronto Islands, but you know, beyond that, (laughs) it really helped inspire thinking about what's possible without limiting beliefs and excuses. All of our activities reinforced the concepts and insights, and they really did blend together for a big wow and many epiphanies about what we can really do when we think on purpose. Now, I haven't set the date yet for the next retreat, but it will, of course, be included for those who are in the mastermind. Now, I know this sounds too good to resist, right? (laughs) I know. So head over to talktosusie.com and learn more. Grab your kickstart call, and we're just going to talk about what's going on with you and if this program is a good fit. Doors open again at the beginning of the month, so go ahead and book your no-obligation call, and I can't wait to see your name in my calendar. Okay, now let's dive in. Let's start with this question. What would you do if you knew that you'd be successful? My guess is that you don't really even have to think too hard to get the answer, that something came up for you right away. Here's what some of my clients and members of my Facebook group said when I asked them the very same question. They said, finally leave my job become a life coach, work for myself, 
become a yoga instructor, sell everything and travel, go all in on marketing my business, beautify my space, be more open to everything, leave my significant relationship, start a significant relationship, go deeper and be more vulnerable with my friends. Do any of these ideas connect with what you might be thinking? What really clouds the situation here of following your dreams is the way you usually think about what you want. So if you feel stuck, my guess is that you are like so many others who tend to make decisions based on the fear of potential failure rather than doing everything possible to guarantee potential success. Let's start with guaranteed success as a concept. Do you believe that you can actually guarantee success? Or are you willing to believe that all you can do is guarantee effort and believe in success? The two concepts are quite different, actually. We want to believe guaranteed success is a thing. That's for sure. We desire this as a possible outcome. We want a guarantee. Think about it. If you want to leave your long-term job like 10 years or more, you're worried about pension, you're worried about retirement, you wonder if you could really find a better job, even though you're not happy anymore. You want to believe that you will make the right decision about staying or leaving, that one decision is better or more successful, and you would like it guaranteed. Thank you very much. Here's another one. Let's say you're not happy in your relationship. The thought of ending the relationship has crossed your mind. If you want to leave your husband or partner, you want to believe there's one right way to go and one wrong way to go. The right way will be successful and you would definitely like a guarantee that it will be better and not worse. Or that you're ready to make a drastic change like start an entrepreneurial venture or make a big move like downsizing or moving to your retirement geographical location well before retirement, right? Like if you wanted to move to Florida when you're retired and you end up moving 10 years sooner. You sense that there's a right decision and a wrong decision. You will be more successful with the right decision. It can feel like you're stepping around trying to avoid landmines, that the wrong decision is just out there waiting to get you. And it can feel scary, super scary. The thing is that the way you think about success, or lack thereof, will create your feelings. So if you're feeling stuck or scared or confused or hesitant, it's all coming from the way you're thinking. You can easily see how it's hard to believe you'll be successful when you're really thinking a thought that's creating these feelings instead. So let's get back to the concept of guaranteed success. I think you can see a bit better now how your thoughts about success compete and increase the likelihood of entertaining indulgent type emotions that will just continue to keep you stuck. But now let's go a bit deeper about why guaranteed success is impossible. What's going on here? Why does this happen? The first reason why is because success is subjective. Take any of the examples I mentioned. How about career change? Let's say you make a certain salary and you've been at your job for 15 years. You're just not feeling it anymore, even though that salary was satisfactory for a while. And even though you've been happy for a lot of the time you've been there, for now, you're just not feeling it anymore. Maybe you think you're not challenged. Maybe you feel that you're not growing. Maybe you feel stagnant and bored. Or maybe you just have this nagging feeling that there's more out there for you. Can you relate to that? With me and my last job, I started to notice that I wasn't content anymore. That was my big observation. I wasn't quite agitated, but I wasn't cool with the status quo. It just wasn't working for me. I totally felt like I was wasting my time and it was very different from the way I used to feel about my work. Now that I'm a life coach, I call this sort of thing a midlife funk. Things weren't horrible, but I felt off. I kind of think it was the universe nudging me forward to make a change. But I was full of fear. Full of fear. 
I wasn't at all excited about the future. I kept thinking that it was indulgent for me to make a change when I really didn't know what I wanted and I couldn't guarantee my success. I actually remember thinking that clear as day. And when I thought about success, I thought about matching my salary. I thought about my vacation time. I thought about my benefits and it was big and scary and unknown to make a change. And then there was one other thought. When I opened up my brain to even more possibilities, I couldn't help but notice that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And in fact, I thought I would have been one by now, but I really couldn't wrap my head around any of it. I just couldn't see what was possible. Notice the tendency to think about what's not possible rather than what is possible. To think about not being successful instead of being wildly successful. So ask yourself, what does success mean to you? Is it like me? Is it your income? Is it your pension? Maybe it's your retirement savings goal. Is it your type of job? Is it a job title? Is it your level of responsibility or is it something else? Is it flexibility? Is it time off? Or is it something like an invention? Is that something that you wanted to do by now? The amount of impact you've had on a larger scale, maybe it's something like that, like if you're involved in policy work at some level. Maybe the number of people who've been impacted by you, is that something that has to do with success when you think about it? You see what I mean? It is totally subjective and there's no right or wrong answer. It's impossible to guarantee success because it means so many things. And it should really, right? The second reason why guaranteed success is a problem is because it's impossible to control people. (laughs) The types of situations we're talking about involve people. We're not talking about scientific or mathematical equations. Oh no. When you think about what you said you would do, if you could guarantee your success, How many known and unknown people would need to be involved? First, it depends on your subjective thoughts about success. And then there are other people involved in bringing your success to fruition. Perhaps a decision maker opening the door to a job opportunity, or perhaps your financial advisor making decisions that affect your future. Perhaps the way the people you're helping respond to your offer your program or treatment. Maybe it's about that. But you can see that because it's impossible to control people, you have an inherent problem if you're trying to guarantee success. When it comes to why people do what they do or don't do, it's all about feelings. Your behavior depends on your feelings and your feelings come from your thoughts. You just can't control somebody else's actions. Their actions are coming from their feelings and their feelings are coming from their thoughts. So where does this leave you with your desire for guaranteed success? You want it. I want it. Most of us want it. But it is impossible. It reminds me of what Byron Katie says. When you argue with reality, you lose. But only 100% of the time. (laughs) So now what? Let's go back to what I said earlier about believing in success. This is something you can totally control. Again, your thoughts are optional. You can learn to think on purpose. Look at the difference in the way these thoughts make you feel. First, I hate that I don't have success. Second, I'm open to the idea that I can make this work. Third, this decision is the perfect decision for me. Now, the first thought, I hate that I don't have guaranteed success, for example, brings up feelings like doubt, maybe fear, maybe hesitancy. These feelings pull you back from commitment and success. The second thought is a bit different. When you think that you're open to the idea that you can make this work, it pushes you forward a bit toward success rather than the first thought, which pulls you back a bit. Now, the third thought is a bigger demonstration of commitment. When you think the thought, I know this decision is the perfect decision for me, it brings up resolve and positivity. These feelings propel you forward into your belief 
that you will be successful. Now, your feelings might be a little different than the ones I gave you examples for, but that's fine. The point is to associate the thought with the feelings. Three thoughts three very different feelings with these examples. And each of these thoughts are available to you right now. The only thing standing between you and your ability to commit and believe in your success is your thoughts. That's it. So really, when you think about it, what is it that determines the quality of a decision? Really think about this. What is it that determines the quality of of a decision. Do you know what the answer is? You do. (laughs) You are what determines the quality of a decision. And you can decide in advance that it's going to be the right decision. I know this might sound out there, but you can really believe this in advance and it will help you create it. Thinking and desiring guaranteed success will actually keep you stuck. It's you believing something that won't serve you at all because it's impossible in most cases like these. You're wishing and hoping for something that just doesn't exist, but it seems way safer to stay in this space. It's scary to be uncomfortable and risk failure. Isn't that interesting? It's more attractive to stay stuck and be more comfortable than it is to really go for it and increase the likelihood of success and squirm a little bit. Squirming is so much fun, but ask yourself, what happens when you decide to put yourself and your dreams on the front burner of your life and put your effort into practicing thinking on purpose? to actually practice thoughts that move you toward what you want and create the feeling of confidence? What happens when you go all in on yourself? What happens when you don't leave yourself an out? What happens when you practice thinking thoughts on purpose that will help you believe that this is possible and you're exactly where you need to be to make this happen? I'll tell you what will happen. A likely byproduct is commitment a completely different result than when you're not thinking on purpose. You can guarantee your own thoughts. You can guarantee your own feelings. You can guarantee your own behavior. They're all connected. This means you can guarantee your own commitment. And when you are committed, you're prepared to do everything possible to ensure success. Your success depends on you and your ability to think on purpose, to make sure you take care of business, to manage your mind so you create the results you want. And you can decide all of this ahead of time. We like to call this creating results ahead of time. This, my friend, is guaranteed success with a twist. But you control the twist, not external people and circumstances. Now we're talking. This shift in mindset will help you get a better handle on how thinking on purpose can really help you get what you want in life. And this, my friend, is the best news ever, and you can start right now. Now we're talking. This shift in mindset will help you get a better handle on how thinking on purpose can really help you get what you want in life. The best news is that you can start right now. That's it for this episode. My focus as a midlife coach is to help you get excited about your life again. That means that you have to learn to think on purpose. Being the queen of your brain domain is the best place to be. Check out the show notes with more information and links at suzyrosenstein.com. You can also download my free ebook, Nine Secrets to Get Unstuck in Your 50s, at suzyrosenstein.com forward slash nine secrets. Find the community you're looking for by joining my free Facebook group, The Women in the Middle Community, at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. It's for women just like you. Also, I have a special contest running in honor of everyone turning 50 this year. Head over to suzyrosenstein.com forward slash 50 unplugged contest. That's five zero unplugged contest. 
to enter for a draw to win free coaching. Make sure to check this out. Let's do this, ladies, one intentional thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next week.